Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's Hulu's original series, Wu-Tang, an American Saga. Season one, episode five, Cold World. Ooh, a lot of characters are starting to change the way that they behave. Is this the shift that we've been waiting on? It's all coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. <laughs> Opening scene, we have Divine at his hearing, his lawyers behind him, his mother is watching further back in the audience section and he gives a stellar performance, not just meaning the actor, but the character divine in selling the idea that he is this crackhead, he's this addict, and he's yearning to be on parole because he needs help as an addict, that he's not this drug dealer, and he was just tied into this awful world, and he is yearning and clinging to be on his way out to a successful recovery. Divine does such a wonderful idea with selling the story and the idea that he is an addict, not a drug dealer. Remember that he's never used drugs a day in his life. He sells the drugs, but he doesn't do the drugs. But he needs to sell this idea to the judge that he's an addict, that he's not a drug dealer, so he can be released from prison. He does it so well that the judge is convinced that he needs to be in rehab, out on parole for eight months and not in prison. He's granted that, and in the back of the courtroom, we see somebody stand up and they give a very sarcastic laugh, like, wow, I can't believe you just did that. And it's power, and he gives that laugh like, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> He's such in disbelief that he went to that extreme to be released from prison. But hey, what can I say? Prison is another world. You got to do what you got to do. Divine sees him laugh and walk off and he is pissed. Bobby is at a record store and he hears his song playing on the intercom system and everybody in the store is saying man who did this song this is amazing I love this where can I get this and Bobby is at the counter just listening to everybody give him praise about this local song but he's not satisfied with that the guy at the counter he says man you know you really keep putting out these hits man I'm gonna hear your song on the radio and Bobby says no I want to be on that wall, meaning I want to have an album and I want everybody around the world to hear us, not just in this store or a couple of blocks away from here. He notices that the owner of the store sells yellow blank cassette tapes, the tapes that you would need to record beat songs, songs, whatever the case may be. And he says, don't sell anybody else these yellow blank cassette tapes. And the owner says, well, well, why? I mean, do you think they have better sound? And he says, I need to make sure that people know when they see this yellow cassette tape, they know who it is, you know, blue tops, red tops. So <laughs> the guy at the counter says, oh, so you learned a little bit from your hustle. You learned that you want to make it known what's what? He says, yeah, just make sure you don't sell anybody else these yellow cassette tapes and I'll make sure to buy them out. So keep them in the back of the store. Do whatever you have to do. Don't sell these to anybody else but me. And the store owner agrees. Clifford, you know, he's still injured, he's on crutches, and he's talking to one of the suppliers outside, and he's telling them, man, I got hurt at work, it was a mess, me getting on the train, then me trying to get on a ferry to go to work, so I just quit. I'm just trying to go all in with this music thing, and then plus, I had to move away from my mom's place because it was always a mess over there, so I'm just staying with a friend, and I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life. As they're walking down the street, they stop by that same record store and they hear the song and Clifford hears himself on that intercom coming out of the record store as Bobby is coming out. And he's telling him, the supplier, 
dang, that's me. And it sounds really, really good. And Bobby says, yeah, everybody really likes it. And this is something that, you know, you need to keep doing and we need to keep working at this because people are starting to know our name in the streets and the people in the record store are asking, hey, who is this? So here's some new blank tapes. Make sure you write down all your ideas. And Clifford says, wow, they're all yellow. And he says, yeah, we need to get these out to everybody. We'll be swarming through these streets like killer bees. And Bobby says, yeah, just, just like that. Even the supplier says, Bobby, that's where you need to be, man. This music sounds amazing. Why don't you keep going with that? Divine looks really bummed out that he has to be in this rehab facility. And when he gets there, it's not really a warm welcome. The guy that keeps everybody in line says, you have a curfew. If you miss that curfew, I will send you back to jail. I will let them know that you miss curfew. I will know, let them know that you're not following the rules. Here's the time, here's when we eat. And when you get to a certain point, you have to keep a job to stay in here. And of course, Divine is just listening to it and is really pissed off because keep in mind, he's not an addict. He's just there to get home. So we can already tell Divine is just mentally already fed up with everything. Bobby's mother is at work. She notices that her sister is flirting and is chatting to the mystery man that she never knew who she was talking to. And it's actually one of the gentlemen that she works with at the store and Linda is not too cool with that. She's not cool at the fact that her sister is dating someone that's so close to her and what she does on a nine to five every day. She's not cool with that and looks very upset with her sister and she makes it known to her sister with a look that she's not pleased. Bobby visits home and he sees everybody. He sees the family. He's catching up. He even gets to see his Aunt Lori and they're talking amongst themselves. And he's looking around and he notices that the house isn't burned down. The house is still going, it's going strong and everybody's going along their regular day. They're not without anything. And he gives a side eye to Bobby like, let's, let's talk. And they go downstairs in the basement and he tells Bobby, you know, you, you, you really, you know, did a little something around here while I was gone. And Bobby says, well, you told me to step it up while you were in jail. We got food in the refrigerator. The bills are caught up. We got what we need. And Divine says, you got what you need. <laughs> That little side hustle of selling weed to the Wall Street white boys, that's cool and all. But I'm talking about some real money. I'm talking about us moving up out of here and moving to something even better than that. Really downplaying what Bobby and what Dennis figured out themselves to get out of that crunch, to get out of that hole of what they were dealing with. And Bobby says, we don't have to worry about cops. And Dennis says, yeah, we ain't gotta worry about cops. We ain't gotta worry about stupid wars with who got what corner. We just selling weed. We trying to just not only get by, but we caught up on bills. We, we all eating. We okay, what's the problem? And Divine gets really pissed off because he's having to deal with, man, Am I not the man of the house anymore? Or he's noticing that Bobby stepped out of his comfort zone and really stepping up and being the man of the house. So of course his ego is a little struck right now. And Divine lets them know that y'all could have been the ones in jail. Had y'all remembered to do the pickup, y'all would have been the ones in jail. And it's because of me that we have what we have. And it's because of me. And he's just going on because of me, because of me, because of me. And Bobby says, because of us, you are out of jail. Because of us, we kept it down. Not realizing that they're a team and everything that was done was to keep the family afloat and to keep things together, be under the radar from the cops, which he did, and not have everybody going to jail. Devon is steadily going off on Dennis and Devon as if what they did wasn't enough. And Bobby says, don't you have curfew? And it's that check of, you think you're running stuff, but just, just deal with what you gotta deal with. And Divine has no choice but to bite his lip and leave because he has to make that curfew or back to jail he goes. 
Dennis goes back to this rehab facility and he's listening to all of the addicts give their stories and things that they've been through in life. And as they're talking, he reflects back how he was just a little hustler and he was selling newspapers off the freeway and he was always bringing home money to his mom and these thick stacks of one selling newspapers for one dollar. And while he's a young boy, he sees this white guy, looks very corporate and he's in this car and he asked Vine, how much are you making from those newspapers and what are you selling them for? And he says a dollar. He's like, that's a nice hustle. And how much money you got now? He's like, I got about $20. He said, oh, that's good. You know, for an eight year old, is that good at 14? Is that good at 20 years old? You need to keep being an entrepreneur, but you need to make sure you flip it from time to time. So that's something that stuck with Divine all those years as he sits there and reflects back, kind of regretful of, wow, I had all of these plans and he's putting the blame on everybody else. Dennis is pissed off with Bobby because he hears the song that everybody else has been playing in the neighborhood with Clifford on Bobby's beat. And he meets him at the music store and he says, what's wrong with you, Bobby? You got this boy Clifford rapping on your beat while he dissing our side of the town. He's like, he's not dissing our side of the town by repping his. He's repping where he's from. That's just hip hop. He's like, nah, nah, man. We had something going on. It's all about where we from. And you letting him rap on your beat, that's messed up. And he's pissed off. And Bobby is like, that's not what he was saying in the song. Why? How did you get that from the song? He just said where he was from. So what's your problem? Dennis was not having it. And he walks out of that music store like he never wants to talk to Bobby ever again. While Dennis goes out to sell some weed to somebody that he knows, his friend is telling him, man, yeah, I really like this song, man. It's really, really nice. Have you heard it? And Dennis is like, yeah, I heard that, man. But what about you? Aren't you still doing beats and stuff? He's like, yeah, I still do some beats. Matter of fact, I got some songs right now. He plays the music and Dennis proceeds to make a clapback song for the song that wasn't meant to be a diss in the first place. And he's talking about Killer Hill and he's talking about where he's from. And you can already tell as the viewer, oh my goodness, Dennis is on his way to starting some beef. But in the midst of him doing that, he tells his friend, make sure this goes in the streets, man. This sounds really, really good. So now we got Dennis flowing with somebody else that does beats as well. And it's flying and it is getting all through that neighborhood. And people are starting to play that now. Bobby gets a hold of the tape and he listens to it. And he doesn't even get, ex he doesn't even get upset. He's just sitting there listening to it like, this is good too. And you could tell the producer in him, those ideas were churning and he could care less about a beef or what anybody else thinks. You can tell that he's listening to people's lyrics. You can tell that he's trying to see who's the best of the best. And that's what he was doing. Bobby's mom notices that her sister is just giving everybody gifts. She's wearing a nice leather jacket. She's telling them to go ahead and open the gifts now. And she's like, well, it's not even Christmas. She's like, no, they, those kids can order it, open it now. It's no big deal. And plus, I hate waiting until Christmas. It's okay. And she asked her, where are you getting all of this money? And she's like, don't worry about it. I hit the number. I got my money. And she's like, really? You hit the number? Like, where you been playing? She's like, look, I play where I want to play. My number hit. Just chill out, I'm giving everybody gifts. It's no big deal. So she, Bobby's mom goes into the kitchen to kind of mind her, her own business, but she's still listening to everything that's going on in the hallway. And we have Aunt Lori and Bree, she's talking to her. And she says, I wanna give you this gift face to face. And she hands her an envelope. And in the envelope are two Broadway tickets. And she tells her, make sure that you take your boo. Make sure that you take Dennis. And she is floored. You know, she's always loved theater and she's never been to a big production such as Broadway. And she gives her a hug and she's just very thankful. But Bobby's mother tells the sister, hey, come here. Come into the kitchen. Come here. She goes into the kitchen and says, what did you give that girl? And she says, I gave her a, a gift. I'm her aunt. I can do that. She says, you know what, Lori, I'm really fed up with you 
you are just all over the place. You pop into our lives every two years, different career, different life, different person you're messing with. You're getting money from all these different sources. Why don't you just figure out what's going on with you? And the sister says, you are one to judge me about what to do with my life and where to go. I'm young. I'm having fun. And don't get mad at me because you got locked down with a whole bunch of kids. And she can't help but just to stand there in silence. Silence, she tells her niece and nephew, I'm out of here. I'll see y'all another time. And Bree can tell that it's a buy of, hmm, she's not coming back for a while. And Bree catches eye contact with her mom and starts to get teary-eyed because she knows that clearly her mother said something to make her aunt leave. Divine is at his girlfriend's house. And while he's there, he is filling out a job application. And he gets to the question, have you been convicted of a felony? And he stops to think, should I lie on this application because I really need a job? Because the rules of where I am with the rehab facility, I have to have a job soon. But he thinks about it. He decides to be honest and he checks the box, yes. And you can tell he is mad at the fact that he is a convicted felon. The girlfriend comes in, she gifts him with a nice expensive watch and she tells him, I'm kind of happy that you're taking this route on the straight and narrow. I'm here for you. I got you a watch since you have a curfew, since you'll probably have a job soon, just to keep time. And this is from me to you, and I'm just happy for you. Meanwhile, you got the family at home. You got the mom, you got Bree, and Randy is upstairs, and you have Bobby is sitting on the couch. And they're listening to his rap songs that he's produced, and even the other one that Dennis did. And they're just chilling, just listening to some music, and looking at the Christmas tree, and just chilling. They hear a knock at the door. Randy goes upstairs, because he's like, oh, this must be some adult stuff. So he takes off. And... She sees Larry at the door, and of course, Larry is who she works for, and she's just like, well, hey, Larry, how you doing? You know, well, come on in. And she's, you know, really conflicted of why he's showing up at the house, because Larry doesn't come to her house. And not only is it Larry, but it's two of his other Italian goons that have came in the door with him. And now everybody is getting kind of shaky and huddling up with one another like, why is Larry here? Because everybody know in the town that Larry is a hustler slash gangster slash don't mess with me. I got a restaurant, but we all know what you're doing in the restaurant. They come in and she says, well, hey, what's the problem? And she said, well, you know what? Before you start, Bobby, you know, somebody cut off that music so we can hear what he's saying. And, and somebody else says, no, 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 don't turn it off. I actually like music. He goes over to the stereo, he takes that tape out, and he puts in another tape of a very racist song that used to be played with a, for a lot of racist comedians and singers what they used to perform back in the day. And it's all the N-words and hang this and shoot this. And he's playing it, and while he's playing it, he's just doing his fingers like, I love this song. Do you know what this song is saying? Yeah, and he's freaking out the family and they're like, what is this about? They have no idea and their plans to scare the family was doing exactly that. And she says, can you explain what's going on? I don't know what's going on here. And the guy that's playing the cassette tape, he says, you know what? This is the song I play for your people when you steal. You're a thief. She says, I have never stolen anything from y'all. And Larry says, it's not you, it's your sister. And the guy says, no, 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 Larry, don't take up for her. Yeah, it's your sister. She goes, what about my sister? He says, well, you know, your sister, she lied and cheated us out and said that she hit the number. But she really didn't. And the guy that she's been talking to at the diner, he's gone too. So we got two missing people. We need you to tell us where she is. And she says, well, I don't know where she is. I don't even know what's going on. And at this point, you could tell she's angry, but she's scared. She doesn't want to get too lit about it in their face. So she kind of backs up like, I, I don't know where she is. That's my sister. And he says, okay, since they're gone, you're responsible 
for what she owes us. So we're going to need that. And it is a very terrifying scene that they know they don't have to say this twice. So they need to think of how to get this money back that the auntie has stolen from these people from lying and saying she hit the number. We got Bobby's mom. She tells Divine what's going on and the situation that they're in. And he says, okay, I I'm going to handle it. She says, no, 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 no. You can't handle it. You just got out. You got people looking at you. Bobby overhears the conversation and says, she's right. You can't handle it. You just got out. Let me step up and I'll take care of this. I got this. Once again, Divine is feeling like he's not needed and it's pissing him off. And he goes into a flashback of when he gathered up enough money and he took the family into this empty house and said, so this is ours. I got it. You know, everybody find a room. Everybody have fun. And mama, I just signed, signed the lease to this house. It's all ours. And she can't believe that he got it. And she says, Divine, you are always pulling through for this family. So he's reflecting back all of the things that he's done as the man of the house. And he is just really getting his ego dragged. He goes to the supplier. And I'm thinking, oh, he's going back to the supplier. Why are you trying to go back to re-up? And he tells the supplier, like, we go back, man. And I know I'm in the situation that I'm in, and I know you did business with Bobby while I was in jail. And he says, yeah, man, you know, I did business with Bobby. And he really held it down, you know, despite the fire and everything. I mean, I know that was a loss, but he really stepped up. And by the way, that music that he been putting out, now that's fire. He really needs to go with that. Bobby, man, he really stepped up. You know, you ought to be proud of your brother. And just the sound of Bobby's name Divine just seems so angry and he bites that lip like, I keep hearing Bobby, I keep hearing this name. He says, all right, well, that's cool and everything, but Bobby's holding it down, selling that weed or whatever he's doing. But uh, I need to get back in the game. And the supplier says, I can't do that, you hot, man. Like, everybody looking at you, the cops looking at you, you got too many eyes on you, man. Like." Look, Bobby holding it down. Y'all got a good side hustle with the weed and the Wall Street white dudes. Man, why are you tripping? Spend some time with your girl. You just got out. Spend some time with your family. Enjoy kind of not doing nothing right now because you just got out. Man, now you're too hot. I can't do business with you. If you need some money, I can give you some money. He says, no, 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 man. I, I don't need no money. Just, just help me out. He says, I, I can't do it. When your parole is over, when you're clean and clear, come back. But for right now, nothing I can do for you. They share a pound. Divine is pissed, but he says, thank you, man, and he leaves. Despite what's going on with the music and both areas putting out their little tracks about each other and Killer Hill and Stapleton and all this other stuff, Bobby goes to Dennis and says, hey, man, I, I need your help. And Dennis is looking at him like, he's like, look, all that music stuff, that's cool, but I really need your help. My mother is in a terrible situation. We really need to start selling more weed, man. And Dennis, even with the music stuff, looking back, they cool. You can tell that he wants to help him out. So they leave and they go on their way because they know they got things to do. On the other side of town, we have Dennis talking to his girlfriend, and he says, hey, you know, um, I really need a ride uptown to get some things. And she says, well, I can't because I'm on my way to work, but what's going on uptown? What you got to do that's up there? And he says, I need to re-up. And she says, well, where did you get the money? Because you're not even working. And he says, the Dominicans are going to front me. And she says, look, you are finally on the straight and narrow we're not under stress, you out, out of jail. Why would you wanna go backwards and re-up again? And not only that, but you got the Dominicans fronting you, and how do you even know you gonna sell anything? How do you know you're not gonna go back to jail? He's like, it's because of me you had this car, okay? When I was doing what I was doing, you got this car because of me. She's like, I get that, but you're not about to guilt trip me because I'm on the straight and narrow, because we're doing stuff right. You're not about to make me feel bad because you got me this car. She says, you can do what you do, but I'm not gonna assist your plans. 
I'm not going to do like I used to do back in the day and I'm always fronting for you and I'm always hiding stuff and I'm always, no, I'm not doing that anymore. So if you're going to get back in the game, you're doing it by yourself. I'm not driving you. And, and if you keep doing this, we just going to have to be done because I don't agree with you doing. He's hitting the car and he's just like, man, why won't you do this? She's like, I can't. She drives off. He's just really churning and thinking, man, what am I going to do now? Bobby's mom talks to the daughter and says, so you remember when we had that conversation that there's times in the family where we all got to step up and help? Well, your brother gave back, gave back the game system that Lori bought him. I took back some stuff that was around the house. Now, I need to know what she got you so we can take that back too and get that money. And she says she got me theater tickets and not just any theater tickets. She got me tickets to go see Broadway. And I'm not taking that back. And that's not fair that... Anytime we in a situation like this, like I got to give up what it, what it is. It was a gift and I'm keeping it. And the mother slaps her and tells her, when you are an adult and you have kids and you got to do stuff on your own, you think about the importance of what I'm doing. And you can't use those tickets because they were purchased with stolen money. And she says, stolen money? <laughs> like, I don't get that because our rent is paid by Bobby and Dennis selling drugs. Our bills are caught up from that money. So what are you talking about? And she's becoming an adult, but you can tell she, she had that balled up for so long just to say that. And she is just so over how and why and where they get the money from. And she's not giving back those tickets. You could tell. She's like, we could go through the storm right now. <laughs> we could squabble in this bedroom, but I'm not giving back those tickets. Later on that night, she goes back into her room looking for those tickets, and she tells, ask Randy, where's your sister? And he says, well, she's gone. Honey, she was at that Broadway play in some good seats, might I add, looking at the play, looking at people on stage and I think it was to play a piano lesson if I'm not mistaken but she's looking at the play from her seat and she's in a moment not thinking about the drama at home not thinking about the things with Dennis because Dennis hasn't responded to her he's been ignoring her she's been paging him and she wants to talk but for some reason he is not reaching out to her at all so she's been feeling alone and She's in her own world of looking around at the ceiling, looking around at the seats, and she's seeing everybody clap and laugh and cheer, and she feels that joy and that rush of theater, something that she always was interested in in the past, something that her Aunt Lori told her to go ahead and pursue anyway, and she feels that energy of theater. And it brings her to tears, brings her in such a world that she starts to cloud out the sound of what's going around her. And she just sees the ambiance of these high class white people are at this theater watching this play. And oh, wow, I finally got, got an opportunity to see what I had always been reenacting in my living room. So she has a very powerful moment just to herself, something she can enjoy. And she looks over at the seat next to her, empty, wishing that Dennis was going through this wonderful experience with her. It's nighttime, it's super dark, and we hear somebody running <sighs> really quickly. And we see the front door of the rehab facility, and he says, hey man, 20 more seconds, you would have been locked out, and I would have been calling them to take you back to jail. And Devine barely makes it to get in to make curfew at the rehab facility. He goes into his room, he locks the door, He's sitting there like, wow, why am I in here? And so frustrated. And he's playing back the, the sounds of hearing, wow, Divine, you're such a big help. You always pull through and reflecting back at moments where he's helped and saved the family. And he goes into his backpack and he pulls out the re-up, a big sack of re-up. And he puts, sits back in the bed and he puts the re-up on his chest like he about to do something. 
and that was the end of the episode. What an amazing episode. I watch it. I'm a fan of Wu-Tang. So I watch it and I'm like, it's so uh, suspenseful. Where I'm just like, oh my God, what's going to happen? But I'm a fan. So I'm like, well, you know, I know what's going to happen to everybody. But it was such an amazing episode to show how people's mind frames are changing. Some people now are all in with the music so far. Oh, and another scene that I forgot to mention, we have Clifford is on his side of town in the apartment. He's flowing and he's gathering a little crowd where he lives and people are freestyling and he's freestyling. He just spitting bars and everybody like, woo, and everybody's starting to know, man, uh, 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 Shotgun, which was his name at the time, he, he really got that heat, you know. And as he's spitting, we got Shy that comes in there and he's listening to him. And Clifford says, Hey man, why don't you spit? Because you know, I heard you could get down. He's just like, Nah, you know, you know, I'm still in this game. So he lets us know that he's still in the game, he's really not feeling the music thing. And, and that was that scene. But anywho, I really feel like this series is starting to, to speed up. A little bit we got Clifford that's all in with the music and we got Bobby and we got Dennis but of course when he did the music he was just doing it to retaliate so I don't think he's at that moment moment yet where he's just gonna go all in as dedicated as Bobby and as Clifford where they are in their lives but as I said in the last review just in life in general not everybody's gonna be inspired the same time you're inspired to follow your dreams. That's why it's always best to keep going as that strong train, pursuing your own dreams. Another side note with Brie when she went to Broadway and she got that rush of theater. As somebody that's done a Broadway rendition plays, I remember my first play. Keep in mind that uh, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, I am a newbie trying to make my way and learning and becoming an actress and develop my, developing myself as an actress and the cliff, cla cliff notes and crash course of how to really get in the game and to, to really crisp your craft is theater. With theater, there's no redos. With theater, you have to take control of that moment to capture that audience. If you don't and you drop the ball, you have missed that moment. The very first time you experience perfecting a scene, perfecting a moment, hearing the roar of a clap and emotion, hearing laughter, hearing uh, the sniffles and people in a very sad scene. It is the most rewarding feeling you can feel. The rush of being backstage, listening to your cues, being on point, making sure that your costume is right. It's such a rush. And it's a little different with film because film, you can retake, you can stop, you can call for a line, you can, there's a lot of things that you can do, but theater, totally different ball game. So I really understood what she meant emotionally when she got that rush of emotion. And I like this and I wanna experience this again because after I had that experience, it was Sister Act. We did a total of 12 shows and they were all sold out and that was my first play. And that was last year and it was absolutely amazing. And since then, once you get a taste of what you wanna do, you can't stop. That's, ha that's what's happening with Bobby. That's what's happening with Clifford, AKA Shotgun at the time. They've gotten that rush. They've gotten a, a, a routine of recording music and they're serious. They're not looking at anything else. Bobby is still caught up in that selling weed stuff in this episode, but it's a dire astray situation. And him having to do that, you can tell it makes him angry because it's pulling him away from the music. I can't wait for next week. Wow, we only have four episodes left and we really still haven't gotten to a big chunk of the music. But as I'm watching, I think this is just the intro of how they all got started. What I was originally thinking before getting into this series is I thought since they had 10 episodes, they were gonna show us this whole development. But now that I look at it, it's really just introducing us to 
who they were at the time and what pushed them into music. I have a strong feeling that when we get up to episode nine and 10 is when we hit the crescendo of maybe them getting a deal or maybe them coming to that moment of Wu-Tang and picking names and who they are. Uh, because we only have four episodes left. And if you get into the music too quickly, then it'll feel rushed because you only got four episodes left. And are we going to go over everything that cream and everything that y'all did when y'all like, uh, it's not enough time. And it wouldn't make sense to do a montage of different stuff because it just seems like it's just it's like you're rushing. So I've accepted the fact and what I'm seeing and what I think they're doing with the writing. This is just my guess that this is what this series is. It's not going to give us all the way up into who they are now as Wu-Tang a little bit older, um, but really giving us that evolution of understanding their story of who they were before the fame so we can appreciate the music even more. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram, same profile name, official bun underscore E. Now remember, I did receive some messages saying, Bunny, I didn't see when you posted this video. I didn't see when you posted that video. You have to click on the notification bell in order, for, in order to get notifications of when I post something. If you don't, then you'll just see them later when they're posted. Um, but let me know if you have questions and concerns. Comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, however you feel. Let me know how you feel. I'll see you later.